Please be seated. So you know those drawings of trees that you sometimes see where the root system mirrors the branches? Tree roots don't really grow like that, apparently. They don't mirror the branches like that. They do go down into the earth several feet, but then they spread out in many directions, as many directions as possible, sometimes for amazing distances. Pando is believed to be the world's largest tree, but standing next to it, you would never know that because above ground, Pando appears to be not a single tree, but an entire forest of quaking aspen in south central Utah. But every one of the estimated 47,000 tree trunks in that forest colony are all genetically identical and they are all connected via a massive root structure which is believed to be one of the largest single living organisms on earth. Pando occupies over 100 acres of forest and it is believed to be as much as 14,000 years old. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out roots by the streams. Our souls are like that. Our souls are our root system, the root system of our being, spreading out below us and helping us to weather whatever happens up here in our lives. The trouble is, a lot of what life throws at us causes us to forget that those roots are there. Or it convinces us that the only thing we have to rely on is our self, or our fragile, finite desire to control things. Jeremiah has a thing or two to say about that, doesn't he? Cursed be those who trust in mere mortals and make flesh their strength. Our souls are the root system of our being, and much of what a life of faith is about, what spiritual practices do, is help us learn and relearn how to reconnect with those roots and come to really trust them. Jeremiah says that trees planted by streams shall not fear when heat comes. In the year of drought, they will not be anxious. But our lives, in our lives, we are awash in anxiety, aren't we? And so often caught up in fear. I've been in several conversations recently where I've been toggling back and forth between the storm of fear and the roots of faith. And in all of these conversations that I've had, someone that I was talking with was facing something that legitimately made them afraid. And you can imagine any number of things of what that might be, receiving a difficult diagnosis, or having a loved one enter hospice, hearing a rumor that the company you work for is downsizing, in one specific case, it was several rabbi friends of mine talking about the fear and trauma that our Jewish siblings live with, especially after the most recent attack in Texas and even in the continued prevalence of anti-Semitism in towns all around us. As Christians, we are privileged not to live with the same level of fear, but we all know what fear is like, don't we? We all know how it feels, how potent it is, how instinctual it is. We know how fear demands our attention and how easy it is to get fixated on fear and feel how tense and constrained and limiting it makes us feel, like there's no place to go, there's nowhere to run. 
But one rabbi also reflected on verse 5 of Psalm 118. It's a verse that they had been using to loose some of those constraints of their fear and to reconnect to their roots. Now, the translation in our Book of Common Prayer doesn't really capture the essence of this verse because there's some wonderful Hebrew wordplay that doesn't translate well. Wordplay that contrasts a narrow place with a wide open place. So verse 5 reads, from the straits, as in dire straits, as in narrow place, confined place, from the straits I called to God. God answered me in a wide open place or from a place of expansiveness, from a place of limitations to a place of expansiveness. So now in these conversations or in the situations where I'm anxious or I'm with someone who is anxious or afraid, I'm starting to wonder what's beneath the fear? Where is that expansive place? And do my roots reach into that place so that I can draw some sustenance from there? Because fear might be where we get stuck, but it is never, ever the end point. There's always something underneath it, something stable and sustaining. The roots of faith are there. We do feel trapped in fear sometimes, but beneath that limiting space, our souls stretch out beyond our comprehension and into that expansive place where God answers and feeds us and sustains us. We just have to remember again and again and again and re and connect with that, reconnect with that, and to trust it trust it. Now, I'm guessing that today's gospel might have sparked some fear in some of us, especially those of us who are privileged, who have a lot of resources, who are well-fed and generally happy and well-spoken of. Woe to you, right? We might feel some fear when we hear that, and it might send us into fight, flight, or freeze mode. We might fight against it, argue with it. No, well, well, he doesn't really mean that. I mean, I can't believe that he would say this. Or we might flee from it. Oh, look, the psalm is nice. It says, happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked. That's me. Phew. Or we might freeze. I have no idea what to do with these verses. I hope he doesn't preach about them. Maybe if I ignore it, it'll just go away. But there's another option, the option of sitting in or with that fear, being present to the discomfort that these verses arise in us, and being open to what it is that they might teach us. Maybe calling out to God from that constrained space and listening for God to answer from an expansive place, letting what lies beneath rise up and fill us with the life and the sustenance and the support that we need so that I can share my gifts and my resources with others. What would God say to you if you called out from the strait that you are in, whatever it is, how would God respond from that expansive place? Can we learn how to feel down into those soul roots, which, to be honest, have always sustained me, have always sustained all of us? Can we learn how to trust that expansiveness, Trust the abundance of that spiritual root system, which is to say, can we learn to really trust God so that we can live, 
so that generations after us can live, so that we can all thrive like trees planted by streams of water. Amen.